When I was 16 years old, my favorite pastime was playing computer games. But I also wanted to be a rock star. So I convinced my parents to buy me a drum set. And I taught myself how to play it. I started playing in several heavy metal garage bands, uh, all of which practiced at my home, which I'm sure made my parents regret their decision. I also, about the same time, started learning how to write music on my computer. Now, when I went to college, I got kind of sick of toting the drum set around, and people don't really like them around, believe it or not. Um, but I continued writing computer music, and in fact, I even wrote some award-winning music for some computer games. Uh, that was going pretty well, and I kept it up for a while, but then one day I stopped. And I decided that it was time for me to focus on serious things, like work. And I didn't allow myself any side projects that I didn't think had some uh, ability to pay off. Uh, that went on for about 10 years, actually, and then one day, I looked at myself and said, wow, I don't have any hobbies that don't involve sitting at a computer keyboard. And that was pretty disturbing. Fortunately for me, I was at Ignite, I was at Ignite Phoenix 4, and I saw Robert Hochman Jr.'s presentation on taiko drumming. So I signed up for lessons and became a taikoist. This was a very positive and very crucial turning point for me in my life, because what happened is it, reawoke, it reawakened my love of playing music and performing, and it connected me with a whole new community of people that loved it, too. And soon after that, in November, uh, my friend Nicholas DiBiase, holla, um, <laughs> contacted me and said, hey, you do music stuff, right? You want to do some collaborations in 2010? I was like, yeah, I'll do that. He and I started working together, and before long, we were running the Desert Bloom Phoenix uh, Music and Art Festival, which some of you have heard of. Now all of you have heard of. And that's, that was great. I started seeing all the passion in our local community around here for music and art. Then I went to see the Pangean Orchestra, which is an amazing thing. It was founded right here in Phoenix. Uh, it is an orchestra uh, that brings together musicians who play instruments from around the world. One of the instruments I saw at that was called a cajon. Not cajones. <laughs> cajon, which is a Peruvian box drum. You sit on it and you hit it like this. Well, I, I fell in love with it instantly, and I bought one. Wow, this whole owning instruments thing, that's kind of cool. What else do I like? Shakuhachi, the Japanese bamboo flute. I found one online for $40, very entry level, but still, I bought it. Started learning to play it. I'm not good, I'm getting better. But the flute thing was working for me. So, hey, how about a Native American flute? Those are easy to play. Easier than the Shakuhachi, anyway. Pat Haran is a man who lives here in Phoenix and makes these Native American flutes, they are beautiful instruments. If you can blow, blow a whistle, you can play one. You should look him up. After that, I thought, well, maybe I should get back to my own roots. So I bought a mountain dulcimer, which is an instrument that was created by uh, the Scots-Irish, that's my ethnicity, in my home region of Appalachia, Virginia. I know you heard the accent. So the next thing I know, I look around, wow, I'm surrounded by music. I'm surrounded by instruments and people who love it. Life pretty much rules. I'm playing gigs. What is this? The thing is, I did all of this for only about the price of an iPhone. That's how much it cost me to buy all those instruments. And I just made the decision. I just decided to reinvent my life. And it was a very easy decision. The thing is, it's not something special about me. I'm not a musical prodigy. I'm not a musical genius. I just made the decision. And you can too, and here's why. All humans are musicians. We are born as musicians. And we have unfortunately allowed ourselves to be convinced that music is not something you create, it's something you consume. You buy it, you download it onto your iPod. The notion that music should be created by a few elite individuals and then consumed by everybody else should be as noxious to us as the idea that only authors are allowed to write words on paper, or write words at all for that matter. We are musicians, you are musicians, the difference is only whether or not you choose to act like them. And this is something I strongly believe. It can change your life if you accept that simple fact. If you can tap along to a song, that illustrates that you have rhythm. So here are some resources I've got for you. What I, what I would like for you to do is check these websites out. And what I, what I really want you to do is simple. Go out there, explore the world of very easy to play instruments and you will be amazed at how many there are. Buy some. Get one for your kid if you have a kid, okay? Encourage them to play it. But try it out. Find out what it feels like to play a musical instrument before you decide you can't. Start tonight. Make this your year of music. Thank you.